Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Good to see you in Sunday school. Looks like we may have a few out today, but it's sure good to see you. I know we've got a lot of sickness going around right now, and as you can tell, I'm kind of creeped up myself. But I'm feeling pretty good and glad to be in the house of God and to serve the Lord. This is, I guess we're considering this our Christmas weekend for the church because next Sunday Christmas will be over by then. So uh, this is our, I guess this is our Christmas Sunday. I was looking at our crowd a little bit earlier thinking about how it was a little bit short in Sunday school. I thought about the joke that my granddad used to tell about an old farmer who came to church and when he got there he was the only one there. So the preacher asked him, said, well, do you want me to preach or do you not want me to preach? You're the only one here. And he said, well, I've got a herd of cows, preacher, and when one comes up to eat, he said, I don't just throw her out and not let her eat because the rest of them didn't come. He said, I give, I give her something to eat. So the old farmer sat down and the preacher started preaching. He preached for the next hour and a half, just wide open. When he got through, the old farmer came back up there and said, Preacher said, I do feed that one cow when he comes up. The rest of them don't come, but I don't try to feed him the whole barn load. So uh, I don't know. Brother Rogers may give us the whole barn load this morning. Who knows? But uh, Brother Rogers will be teaching for us today, and I'm looking forward to that. As I said, we've got a lot of out sick uh, that we need to remember. This is a Christmas holiday coming up uh, the next few days, and there'll uh, be a lot of travel going on and uh, a lot of things happening. So. Let's keep all these in our prayers. Let's stand this morning. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. Let me call out these few names that we have. Sister Betty Gilmore, let's continue to hold her up in our prayers. Uh, Courtney Evitz is in need of a miracle. Nora Foster, she's a three-year-old with cancer. We need to lift her up in our prayers. Kermit Cantrell, which is Brother Ben's uncle, I think, needs a touch from the Lord. Don Dotson needs a touch. Tammy Panel and the Downs family suffered a loss, so uh, let's remember them. A loss is always tough, but it's really tough right at the holidays if something happens. Uh, Wanda Mitchell family, uh, Wanda passed away, so let's remember that uh, request. Sparks family, someone passed away in that family also. Uh, Brother Aaron Lee, uh, Sister Amanda that's always here. Uh, they're out sick today. Also, let's remember Brother Ben again. He's got pneumonia, some fever, but uh, doing better this morning, according to Sister Arlene. But let's continue to hold him up in our prayer. And uh, then the uh, family that has been coming with us for quite a while now, the Gossweiler family or Willer family, I'm not sure how that last name is spelled or said, but uh, Gosswiller, I think. Uh, they're going back to Oregon this weekend, so they'll be traveling and have requested that we keep them in our prayers. It's a busy, busy season, and uh, I think about all those hurricane victims that we have uh, witnessed up in Kentucky and Illinois and Tennessee, and what a sad uh, Christmas holiday that they, many of those folks will have. And anything I said would not be adequate. Anything you said would not be adequate, uh, except that we can lift them up in our prayers. Hold them up in their prayers. Be prayerful for them that the Lord will send them comfort. He knows how. I couldn't, I wouldn't know how to even start, but he knows how. They're going through a big loss, uh, loss of lives, loss of property, uh, housing, uh, just a lot of displacement right now. So let's remember those that suffered the hair, through the hurricane uh, this past couple of weeks. All right, do you have a prayer request you'd like to make mention of today? Anybody with a prayer request? Brother Ricky? Okay, is that in the morning? All right, let's lift Brother Ricky up in our prayers tomorrow morning. He's having a biopsy done, and I believe for the Lord that uh, I'm believing the Lord will take care of this. Uh, Brother Ricky, uh, we're going to just keep you holding you up in our prayers tomorrow. You can count on the church doing that. Sister Tiffany. Okay, let's remember this request. Sister Barbie. Okay, let's remember both of those requests. Anyone else? Let's remember our service today. I'm looking for a great time in the Lord. And no telling what will happen before we get done. Then we have an awesome service Wednesday night. I mean, just a powerful move of God and... Uh, 
so many good things happening. Let's just continue to, uh, to remember our pastor, hold him up in our prayers, and uh, no telling what we'll say before this is over. It's going to be really something. I'm proud to be involved in it. Brother Rogers, would you take us to the Lord in prayer this morning? Amen. You may be seated. Come on, ushers, and get our Sunday school offering. I'm reminded of the verse in uh, the New Testament where Paul said, if I, only, if I had hope only in this life, we'd be miserable people. But we've got a better life to look forward to. Uh, things happen in this life we don't understand. Uh, it might be sickness. It might be death. A lot of times we don't understand these things. But we can rest assured that there's a better day coming. I'm looking forward to it. And we've got the famous brother Murray Rogers to teach for us this morning. And uh, I'm looking forward to him. Brother Rogers is not feeling so well. So uh, let's hold him up in our prayers as he brings forth the word today. I know he's got a great message for us. So let's welcome him this morning. Brother Rogers. And praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I apologize for my voice this morning. And but God is good, not part of the time, not half of the time, but all the time. He is good. Amen. I just want to say that I'm so thankful for my pastor and the great job he's doing. And for the whole, every one of y'all, for the services that we've been having. I believe the best is yet to come in our lives that we serve God and live for God. I'm going to be teaching now this morning and sow to yourself righteousness. In the Hosea chapter number 10 and verse number 12, the Bible says, Sow to yourself righteousness and reap mercy and break up your following grounds, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness upon you. In the world that we're living in today is that we need the Lord to rain righteousness upon our life. We need to break up our fallen ground and seek the Lord in the day and the hour that we're living in. The Bible said, They that seek the Lord with the whole heart shall be found of him. When you seek the things of God in your life, that's what we need in our midst is to seek God and everything else will fall in his place. In the book of Psalms 126 and 5 says, For they that sow, they that re they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And you read in the book of Psalms, the Bible teaches us that weeping endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. May weep now, but your joy is going to keep coming if you keep serving God and living for God. In the book of Hosea, the writer said, Sow to yourself righteousness and reap mercy and break up your fallen ground and seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness upon you. In this nation today, that's what this world needs is, is a nation of righteousness a nation of trust in the world that we're living in today. In Mark chapter number 4 and verse number 3, the Bible said, A hearken, behold, a hearken, therefore went out to sow, to sow, let me start all over. A hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he so that some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. 
if we were sold the right seed and sold what, what we sow in our life is the word of God. And the Bible said for us to be rooted and grounded in the gospel. To sow the good seed. And the old city used to sing the songs that you cast your bread among the water and it'll come back to you. And Galatians says, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You're going to sow what you reap. And it said in verse number four, and it came to pass that he sowed that some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. You know why the fowls of the air came and devoured it up? Because it had no root in it. It had no spring in it. It had, if we sow the word of God in our life, we're going to produce the good fruits in our life. We're going to produce the things that God wants in our lives if we sow the good things of God. And verse 5 says, and said, some fell on stony grounds when it had much of the earth. Immediately it sprung up because it had no depths of the earth. It had no root in it. It had no depths in it. The Bible tells us if we sow the good seeds, we're not going to live in sin because God's seed remaineth in us and we can't sin because that we are born to God. That is the purpose of being born again is to get out of the sinning business. And in Mark chapter, Mark chapter 4 and verse number 6, But they, when the sun was up, it was scorched. Because it had no root, it withered away. That's what all the people do, that they don't have the true word of God in their life. They don't have no root in their life. They don't have the word of God in their life. They're going to wither away. Because it's going to take the word of God in our last days if we're going to stand. The Bible says stand having our lungs girded about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. Upon. We have to have the word of God in our life. And when, when Satan came to Jesus, he used the word of God. We have to have the Word of God in our life every day. And verse number 7 says, And some fell among the thorns, and when thorns grew up, it choked it, it yielded no fruits. You know, there's a story in the Bible that Jesus had passed by a fig tree, and it had not produced any fruit. And the Bible said that he cursed the fig tree because it had no fruit upon it, but if you read the scripture, it said the time and the season was not yet for that fig tree to bring forth fruit. Jesus said, every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. The only way that we can produce the good fruit in our life is to be rooted and grounded in the word of God, living by the word of God. Verse number eight says, and some fell on the good ground, and it yielded fruit, and it sprung up and did increase, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. If we will produce the right fruits in our life and yield what God wants us to be, that we will produce and we will yield fruit in our life. Some brought thirty. Some brought 60, and some brought a hundredfold. There was a man in the Bible, and this is a sad story, in Luke chapter number 12, in verse 16 through 19. It said, He spoke of a parable, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? because that I have no room to, rest, to restore my fruits. And he said unto, 
And then I will do that I will pull down my old barns and build greater. And then I will store my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, take thy much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease and eat and be merry. This man had brought plentiful. His barns had brought forth much fruit. And he said, I'm going to tear my old barns down and I'm going to build bigger barns. But the next verse says, The Lord said, This day thy soul is required at thy hand because that you're not thinking about eternity things you're thinking about what you can restore in your life in this hour, in this day. But he said you need to think on eternal things, the eternal. The things that we look at in our life are temporary. The things that we do not see is eternal. And that is what the Lord said, man, you're a fool because you are not looking at what I'm looking at. You're going to bestow all the goods that you have, and there's nothing wrong with having things. But he said, I'm going to tear down my old barns, and I'm going to build bigger barns. And I'm going to say to my soul, to take thy ease, thy done good. The Lord said, you're crazy, man, because you're not thinking about eternity things. That's what must we do today in our lives. In Jeremiah chapter number 1, verse number 10, Jeremiah was known to be a weeping prophet of God. He said, to this day I set over thee a nation and kingdoms. Six things the Bible tells us to do in these scriptures. He said to root out, to pull down, to the throw down and destroy. And then he said to build and to plant. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says that there is a time and season for everything under the sun. Time to live, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to sow. There's a time for everything, the Bible says. But we know that Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet of God. He never won a soul to God, but he was faithful to God to the end. And he told him, he said, you destroy those things that hinder you because here's the thing. If you read in the book of Galatians, it said, if I build the things which I have destroyed, I made myself a transgressor. In the book of Psalms, David said, the way of a transgressor is hard. And so we need to build our lives upon the Lord today. We don't need to build our lives upon the sands, the seeking sands of life. We build our life on the foundation. And many people's lives today are not built on the word of God. There is no scripture in the Bible to accept Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, and your saved. It ain't in the book nowhere. That is traditions that man has taken today. There is no, Jesus said, except a man repent, he shall in all likewise perish. That there is no scripture in the whole word of God tells you to accept Christ as your Savior and your saved. If you find it in the Bible, I wish you'd show it to me because it ain't in the Bible. And Jesus said, except you repent, you shall in all likewise perish. It's tradition that people lives on. In these grounds that these people had, some fell by the wayside and some fell on stony grounds and some fell on good ground. But the only ones that yielded fruit was the ones that was sown on the good ground. On the good ground. 
those that was on stony grounds, they yielded no fruit, and they withered away. In all of our lives, if we do not sow the word of God in our life, Jesus said, the Son of Man soweth the good seed. The Son of Man is Jesus Christ, and he soweth the good seed. If you sow the good seed, it's going to come back to you. If you sow the good seed, if you sow the bad seed, it's going to come back. The Bible says if he sow sparely, you shall reap sparely. If you sow bountiful, you shall reap bountiful. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. You're going to produce in that. And so we need to build our lives upon the Lord. In the book of Nehemiah, I didn't give them the scripture. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter number 4 and verse 6, they have burned down the city, and they have tore down the wall. And the Bible said that the people had a mind of God to work and rebuild and restore back. I believe that God will restore back the joy of our, our lives and our salvation when the enemy comes. The Bible tells us that the enemy come to, to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. If we will build our lives upon the Lord this morning, we will not go wrong. We will live happy and we will be what the Lord wants to be in the hour that we're living in. In the book of Hebrews chapter number 12, in verse number 15, the Bible said, Look in diligence, lest that any man fall of the grace of God, lest that any root of bitterness springing up and trouble you, that there might be defiled. I don't want the root of bitterness in my life. I don't want to be an accuser of the brethren. I don't want to find fault in my brothers today. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 3, in verse number 6, the Bible said, I have planted and Apollos water, but it's God that gives the increase. It is that you sow the seed. You got to plant it. You got to water it. But it's God that gives the increase in our life. The scripture said in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 11, in verse 30, I believe it is, it said, he, the fruit of the righteousness, is the tree of life. And he that win a soul is wise. You soul, if you win a soul to God, you're wise. The fruit of the righteousness is the tree of life. And he that win a soul is wise. But in verse number seven says, So then neither to be that planted, anything neither be that water, but God that giveth the increase. It's God that gives the increase in our life. Verse 8, now he that planteth and he that watereth are ones that ever man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. You heard people say it throughout the time that we will not be judged on our works. That's not what the book just said. It said that we will give according to his labor. Labor is working. You read the book of Revelations. The Bible said that we will all stand before the Lord one day and we'll give account for the deeds that we've done in our body, whether it be good or bad, and we will be judged according to our works. Many people say today, you'll not be judged on your words. Oh, yes, you will. There is a scripture in the Bible that in the book of Matthew chapter 25 that the Bible said that a man went and he and the Lord gave him five talents and he gave the other one two talents and he gave the other one talent. And the Bible said the one that had five he gained and the Lord said, give him the talent. And the one that had the two, he gave him the other two talents. And the one that had one, he went and buried it. He said, I knew that you was an ostrich man, reaping where you did not sow. He went and buried his talent. What did the Lord say? He said, take the talent, the one, and give it to the one who used it. 
because we will be judged on our works that we did in this life. Judged on our works. In Galatians chapter 6, in verse number 7, it says, Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever man that he soweth shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall reap of the Spirit. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh. But if you sow of the Spirit, you're going to reap the things of the Spirit. If we walk in the Spirit, the Scripture says, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. To walk in the Spirit of God. I remember many years ago, my dad would have a garden. He would go out and he would, he would sow the seed and he would plant the seeds and he would water the seed. But you've got to get all those things away. You've got to keep the grass away. And you've got to fertilize it. You've got to keep it. We're to grow. We are to grow and mature in the Lord every day in our lives. I pray every day, Lord, let me grow in you. The scripture says if we grow in grace and knowledge, we'll never fall. We'll keep serving God. And we'll keep living for God. And we'll keep serving God. And we will, we will do what he's called us to do in our lives. But I remember he would get that old tiller and he would plow up the ground and he would he would have that ground tilled it up and he would sow that and put that seed in the ground. And he would cover it up. Just as Paul said that another planet and another water. But it's God that's going to give the increase. Here's the thing that we do. When someone repents of their sin and they're baptized in Jesus' name, that is further as we can go with it. It's God that fills them with the Holy Ghost. It's God that fills them. We can't fill them with the Holy Ghost. I wish we could, but we can't. That comes from the good Lord. If we would do our part, God's going to do his part. He is a covenant God. But every day he would go down and he would work in that garden. And to produce the seed and produce the plant in that seed and to grow up. If you plant okra, you're going to receive okra. If you plant corn, you're going to receive corn. And I remember many times he would go down and he would put those potatoes in the ground and, and they would produce and They wouldn't come up. You'd have to dig them out of the ground. But you could take those potatoes, Brother Keith, and wash them off and clean them things, cut them up. And them things was good, coming fresh from that garden. There's nothing like going to the garden and getting those peas out of the garden and shedding those peas. I remember when me and my sister was little kids that mom and dad would have us shedding those peas. And we didn't like shedding peas. We'd take those peas and cover them up under the bottom and put those holes on top. It didn't take mom and dad long to figure that out. We loved to eat it, though. But they'd make us sell those peas. But we sure didn't want to sell them. But anyway, all those, that food that come from the garden, it was so good. We didn't want to work any. But somehow somebody had to go out and labor. Somebody had to work. And throughout in our lives today, through being Christians today, we said, well, we'll just let somebody else go do it. We'll get, let somebody else go knock upon somebody's door when God is wanting you to do it. In John chapter 5 and verse number 35, I believe it is, Jesus said, say not that they're coming four months to harvest but he said, look upon the field. They're already white, and they're already the harvest. But he said, where's the labor? Nobody wants to work. 
No, everybody wants to sit around the table, but no one wants to work in my field. That's what the Lord was saying in this verse of Scripture. Ever, if you sow, you're going to reap. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap it. Whatever, I want to sow the good thing. Sow the good seed. The Son of Man is the man that soweth the good seed. And if we don't produce in our lives and get rooted and grounded in this Word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, when the enemy comes, he's going to steal what was sown in our lives. And when the root of bitterness springs up in our lives, we're going to wither away because we don't have the Word of God in our lives. We are to produce in our lives to know the good fruits. Jesus said in John 15, he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you abide in me, I in you. He said, without me, you can do nothing. You cannot do anything without Jesus today. We do it through him today. What did Paul say? Through Christ today that strengthens you and me gives us a hope today. Without him, we'd have no hope today. I want to read the scripture in the book of Mark chapter 11 and verse 21. It said, Peter called to remember saying unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree that thy curses is withered away. And Jesus said in verse 22, he said, and Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. If you got faith in God, he's going to move the mountain that is in your way. He's going to move the things of God in our lives, but we got to be rooted in it. We got to pull down those things. You got to pull out that grass. You got to pull out, you got to pull out those roots of bitterness that spring up in your life. There's things that come in our life and creep in our life. Solomon said, it's the little bitty foxes that spoils the vine. And we got to pray every day. That's why it says that we have to die daily. We have to die daily every day to keep our body under subjection, lest in any means that we would preach to others and to be myself to be a castaway. Because what would it profit us? So many people today are standing behind the pulpit and telling people things that it is not in the Word of God. It ain't even in the Bible. And we need to be in the Bible today. We need to be in the Word of God. I love praising God. I love shouting. I love rejoicing. But I love when the presence of God comes in here in a place and you just fall down on your knees and you cry and you weep before the Lord. That is the best joy that you'll ever have in your life. The Bible said, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. If you sow in tears, you're going to reap in joy. That's what the good book says. Joy is going to come in your life if you're living for God. The Bible said that heaven rejoices over one sinner that repentance more than the 99 just persons that needeth no repentance. Here's the thing today. Throughout our world today, they're not teaching them. They're not growing and maturing in the Word of God. The Bible teaches us that a child has to have the milk first. You cannot take a child and feed him meat. He has to have the milk, a babe. And we grow and mature in God. That's what we're doing every day in our lives, growing and producing the fruit in our lives. To plow that garden up and till the ground, and hold it out and let God sow righteousness in our lives and reap mercy and to break up our fallen ground and seek the things of God in our lives. What did the book of Matthew 6, 33 said? It said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you to seek righteousness. Seek 
the things of God in our life every day. Seek his mercy. Every one of us in this building need the mercy of God. Psalm, Psalm says that his mercy and his grace and his mercy will follow us all the days of our life. We need it every day in our lives in serving God and living for God. The seed that God planted and produced you know, in the Gospels, it says that if you have faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, the be thou removed, and it shall be cast in the sea. It's tiny. But you sow and you plant that seed, it's going to produce. And you sow, you throw those seeds out, and they're going to produce what is going to be in this life. In our lives today, we need to sow and produce the right fruits in our lives. Throughout all the word, Jesus was looking at the tree to see if it was producing. Every day in our life, he's looking in our lives and seeing that we are producing the right fruit. There is the scripture that says in the Bible, there is no good thing that God will hold from them that walk up rightly with him. God is going to be in your life, and if we will sow what he, he wants us to sow in our lives, we will produce what he wants in our lives. I remember many years that that song, that they still sang it, that Gold City sings it. If you cast your bread among the water, it's going to come back. It's coming back to you. He said some is going to bring forth 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. But it is according to what you sow in your life. Whatever we sow, Galatians says we're going to reap it. And we're going to sow that, the good things of God in our lives. Build your life upon Jesus today. Build your life not on the sands of life and not on the storms of life. You see, when the storms of life come, and if you don't have the word in your life, it's going to wither away. It's going to go to nothing. But we have the word of God in our life. We have a foundation. The Bible said the foundation of God stands the sure. The Lord knows them that are his today. He knows his people today, and he knows where you are throughout all your life. In the word of God, it tells us that every which way a tree falleth, that's the way it's going to lie. If I'm living in a world of sin, that's what I'm going to be resurrected in. If I'm living for Christ and serving Christ, I'm going to be resurrected and spiritual life, living for him. But if I walk, and producing the fruit in our life. And so if we're resurrected, every which way we're lying is the way we're going to be resurrected when Christ comes back. Whether it be good or whether it be bad. I want it to be good, don't you? It said the Son of Man, the man soweth the good seed. He soweth this seed and it produced. That's what God is looking in our life every day, that we are to produce seed that God wants in our lives. Amen. That's what we need in this day and hour. We have to work. We have to make a living. We have to provide for our family. But we also need his word in our life 
to keep us in a troubled world that we're living in. I want to please him, don't you? I want to serve him and live for him and obey his word. Amen. God bless you for being in the house of the Lord. I don't have nothing else this morning. My voice is going out. If Brother Keys wants to say something, he can. God bless you. I was thinking as Brother Rogers was teaching this morning about breaking up the fallow ground. I don't know if you know what fallow ground is. I didn't know until I looked it up and studied on it here a while back. But that is actually ground that a farmer has that is surplus land. And he tills it up just like he does the normal land. But he never does sow it because it's going to be a surplus crop. He's already got barns enough to keep uh, what he's already got. But this scripture says break up the fallow ground. And then sow it. So righteousness, that's what Brother Rogers was talking about. That's the same verse. So righteousness, if you've got some ground that's not being worked, go ahead and print, uh, put the seeds in of righteousness. I believe it'll come back to us. Daddy always, my dad always told this a lot of times. He said, people sow to the world and then expect a crop failure, but it don't work. It just don't work. Ever how we sow, that's the way we're going to get it back. So uh, let's sow good seeds. Enjoy that, Brother Rogers. Let's give him another good hand this morning. I know he was having some voice problems. I woke, woke up and was having voice problems. I was thankful Brother Rogers was teaching. Didn't know that he had voice problems also. But we'll get all this cleared out for long, hopefully. Uh, let me go over a few things. We do have our Christmas supper tonight. And uh, if you can, be here at 5 o'clock. And it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good. Uh, Nail had already fixed about 20, 25 pounds of roast, and it's smelling good. Maybe you can already smell it up through here just a little bit. Uh, she's cooking roast. I'm cooking some pheasant, Brother Chad, from our trip in South Dakota, Brother Chris. Uh, I'm cooking some pheasant and heavy cream. I got up early this morning, real early, and got all that going. And it's on right now cooking, so I hopefully... It's going to be good. Homemade eggnog. Anybody ever had any homemade eggnog? That's good stuff now. You say, well, I don't like eggnog. Don't knock this till you try it. Because this eggnog is good stuff. It's not like what you buy in the grocery store. If you like sugar, you'll like it. If you like cream, you'll like it. If you like vanilla, you'll like it. It's going to be good. I'm I'm going to make a, try to make a couple of batches of that for Tonight. So it's at 5 o'clock tonight. Don't forget that at 5 o'clock where we'll eat at 5 o'clock. Uh, bring a dish if you'd like. Bring one of your best dishes that you always make for Christmas. Bring that tonight. And let us try it out and sample it with you and see how we like it. I'm proud of our church family, aren't you? So proud of our church family. And so let's celebrate Christmas with our church family at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Hearts to hands. We've only got just a day or two. If you hadn't brought Cookies, snack cakes, or rolls, they would take that if you could run by a grocery store on the way or something to bring that. Uh, we're trying to get our Christmas baskets ready to go. If you know anybody that's in need of some food during Christmas time or you know they're going through a hard time, if you will give us their name and address, we'll get them a food basket. It'll be a complete basket. It'll have the ham or turkey or whatever in it, and uh, it'll be a complete meal. Uh, for a big family. So uh, if you know somebody that's in need, I've talked to Miss Anthony Joe Fallon uh, this past week, actually. And, uh, most, a lot of you will know her. She's from the Kossuth area, just a great lady, and helps a lot of people. I was talking to her this week and uh, telling her different things about Christmas and some of the things we're doing. And she said, I'm buying Christmas for 36 families this year. I couldn't believe it. 36 families she's buying Christmas for. And uh, maybe you can't buy, buy Christmas for 36 families, but you can bring these items and we can feed a family. And that will be something that you brought and helped out. So uh, bring cookies, snack cakes, or rolls if you can between now and Wednesday night. Uh, if you'd like to be part of the decorating team for Gospel Tabernacle, if you'll see my wife or Sister Summer Bertrand, any of you ladies that would like to be part of the decorating team, now this stuff don't just pop up here. You don't just say abracadabra and, and the fellowship hall gets decorated for every season that we celebrate and have a meal in. 
If it's 4th of July, it looks like a 4th of July. If it's Thanksgiving, it's got Thanksgiving autumn things. If it's Christmas time, it'll have Christmas decorations. Those things don't just happen. I mean, it takes a lot of hard work, and you can see something so small and think, well, I can do that in no time. And once you start it, you realize that it's going to take me a lot longer than I thought. So if you'd like to, if you're creative and would like to be the part of the decorating team for Gospel Tabernacle, they'll have different functions, things that we decorate for. Uh, see those two ladies, and they will get you fixed up. Now, this is Christmas season. You already know it's Christmas season. Most of you probably done got your Christmas shopping done, your grocery shopping mostly done. I don't think you get your grocery shopping all done for Christmas. I think we went to every grocery store every day last week. Every day, Tammy was going to the grocery store. 